Hi, this is Adam Seltzer of the Chicago Unbelievable Podcast and Blog. I'm author of Inside the Murder Castle, a new e-single from Llewellyn Press, out October 1st of 2012. Uh, deals with one of the most popular topics on the blog, the murder castle built by H.H. H. Holmes. That's what we call a building he had down on the south side back in the 1890s. H.H. H. Holmes is uh, generally said to be America's first known serial killer. Uh, over the years, I have amassed really more information about the guy than any normal person would want. I take people on ghost tours to a place thought to be his body dump, but I normally can't take them down to the area where the building we called the Murder Castle was. This was uh, down on 63rd Street. They tore it down in the 1930s. Uh, this is a post office that was built over the site where it once stood. Most of it would have occupied the space over to the left. It's difficult to tell exactly where it was because lining up these fire insurance maps that show us where all the buildings were isn't really an exact science. Around the corner from it now stands the Disco Salad Bar. Oh, uh, this is kind of the grassy pit where most of it would have been. And uh, over here, we've got a diagram of the basement. There's always been a rumor that some of the basement still survives down below the post office. I got to go inside of the post office with a shoot with the History Channel back in June of 2012. Um, this here is uh, the area that actually would have overlapped. This is in the back room. Um so I did get to go down into the basement. Officially, I was just there as a historian, but, you know, I run ghost tours for a living, so obviously I was going to do some ghost hunting while I was at it. This is a fairly ominous doorway leading down into the basement. I didn't really intend to share all of this stuff. It was just for my own reference. I thought there were going to be other uh, investigations coming up here, but I guess those have all been nixed, so this is kind of all the ghost evidence we've got down here. Now, you get down to the basements. Not a lot of employees bother to go down here. They don't really have much reason to. Uh, first thing you notice is this incredible smell that I imagine is about like the kind of smell you get in most of these old basements back then. And walking down the hall, we're getting ever closer to the location where the castle would have stood, the part that would have overlapped. Now, once again, there's only a little bit of overlap. At this point, we would be a little bit south of the original footprint. Um, going right up to the wall over here. As you can see, it's really just about like any other basement. Uh, there's a stairway leading down to there. Wandering around over here. I tried to just get a... Uh, a video so I could get the lay of the land of the place. Most of this stuff would have been well outside of the original footprint. It's a little bit too far south, for one thing. But if you look in just a second here, once I get back from around here, there is going to be this little hole in the wall. You're going to see it was just a set right there. And if you climb up that stepladder into the hole, it'll lead you into this tunnel. Now, just uh, for reference, though, this is a little bit more down the hallway. We'll get back into the tunnel later on. Uh, behind this creepy doorway, I had to turn on the light to show what was in there, and inside of the door was a storage room full of Christmas stuff. Uh, over here, there was actually another wall that had bomb shelter written on it. This place did used to be a bomb shelter. Ironically, this place was set up so uh, the basement was once a place where you would go to survive. Uh, this is the entry to the tunnel way. Um, this is pretty close to the footprint of where the castle would have stood. Here's a picture of me sitting in it, in case you don't believe me. And a couple of photographs that I took just looking down the tunnel area. I tried to get a good video to sort of show off the lay of the land. There is this weird brick wall. The bricks do look about right to being from the 1890s. Uh, there's some fire damage that you can see on a couple of them. There were a bunch of fires in the murder castle, including one that people usually say burned it to the ground. Uh, this particular bend in the tunnel would have gone right to where the castle footprint would have been, overlapped directly. I did get this one odd series of photographs here. You can see there's this bizarre shadow here. I'm not saying that's paranormal or anything, but I don't know what it is. I checked things like the camera strap, of course, obviously. Now, more interesting to the photographs to me is that while I was down in the tunnel, I started making some audio recordings. And for lack of a better idea, I started whispering the names of the few victims who were killed there, including uh, Pearl Connor, an eight-year-old girl who disappeared. Uh, some people say that they can hear her singing in this recording. Uh, give it a listen. Anybody we don't even know about. 
Now, that is an unedited recording. I didn't notice any voice like that while I was down there. There were certainly no little girls nearby. Uh, nearest I can transcribe, the voice is saying, Sorry, Beefalo, which uh, to me sounds like the worst Chef Boyardee product of all time. But it is a very interesting recording, especially if you're into ghost hunting. So, Chicago Unbelievable, right now you can get not only this video, you can hear that audio file in more detail. Um... Also, there is a recipe for Sorry Beefalo and more links to pick up inside the Murder Castle, my full-length account of what it's like being inside of the basement of this building. Check it out. Thanks a lot.